Thank you. Thank you very much. Those images are so incredibly powerful. Madam Rajavi, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to be here today and to be even a small part of what I believe is a great day for the cause of freedom in Iran and, in fact, the cause of freedom throughout the, throughout the world. I'd like to make just a few brief comments and I'd like to address my remarks to the residents of Ashraf 3 and to the resistance units who are risking their lives every day uh, in Iran because they represent what I believe is the front line in a battle, a historic battle, between good and evil. And I know that the sophisticated foreign policy specialists and the think tank intellectuals will reject that characterization. They'll reject it as overly simplistic. They'll reject it as too emotional. With regard to emotion, I think it's very difficult to be dispassionate when tens of thousands of your compatriots, in fact, over 100,000 of your compatriots have been killed in this struggle. And with regard to being overly simplistic, I think it's absolutely essential that we acknowledge that evil does exist in this world, and if we deny that it exists, we tolerate it. And if we tolerate evil, we encourage it. We saw this with Hitler and the hideous Nazi killing machine in World War II. We saw it 40 years later with Pol Pot and the killing fields of Cambodia. What we have seen in Iran in terms of the crimes against the Iranian people, the crimes against humanity that have been perpetuated by uh, the, uh, the mullahs uh, truly rises to the level of evil. And I think we need to recognize that and we need to stand up to it. I think what I have seen, what you have shown us over the course of the past two days, is that your cause will triumph, your cause will prevail over evil. What you have accomplished here in Ashraf 3 has been recognized by a number of our speakers. And I would say that even more important than the material inter, uh, infrastructure that you have built, even more important than the magnificent buildings that you have built, is the spirit of Ashraf 3. What I have learned over the course of the last two days is that the regime may fight you with bullets, it may fight you with missiles, it may fight you with armored vehicles, it may imprison you, it may torture you, it may kill your mothers and your fathers and your sisters and your brothers, but the regime will not, will not triumph over your spirit. That spirit is defined not by a sense of bitterness, but by a sense of hope and optimism, which I think is grounded in your total dedication and commitment to a free Iran. Your strength is, is, is derived from the truth, and the truth is your most powerful ally. And after the lies of the regime are exposed, what will remain will be the facts. The second president of the United States, John Adams, who was also an architect of our revolution and our fight for freedom two, more than 200 years ago, once said that facts are stubborn things. And the facts are clear. It is a fact that there is a path to a free, a democratic, a secular, a non-nuclear Iran, and that path is revealed in Mrs. Rajavi's 10-point plan. It is a fact that there is a viable alternative to this regime. The NCRI and the MEK provide that alternative. This is not Syria, this is not Libya. We have a capable 
government in exile who can guide the Iranian nation to freedom, who can restore the basic rights of the Iranian people. And it is a fact that the regime will fall. It will fall because of its incompetence, because of its brutality, because of its endemic corruption, and because, and I think most of all because, of the desire for the Iranian people to be free. So let me thank you for your generous hospitality. Let me thank you for sharing your experiences and for sharing your hope and your vision for the future. I'm truly proud to be in your company. Thank you.